Meg Records, the Meg Record Keeping Institute, Entity Number 102, The Headless Hunter. Content warning. This article contains graphic descriptions of gore, including detailed descriptions of violence, bodily harm, and blood. It may be disturbing or triggering to some readers, so please exercise caution before proceeding. Viewer discretion is advised. Subject, The Headless Hunter. Interview Log 17-02-2023. The following is an interview between a Meg investigator, operating under the codename Robert Joseph, and John Walter, one of the only known survivors of an encounter with Entity 102. Begin Log 1745. Interviewer, Robert Joseph. Interviewee, John Walter. Robert. Good afternoon, this is Meg Investigator Robert Joseph. Could you please state your name and your age for the Meg's records? John. My name is John Walter and I am 27 years old. Robert. Alright, let's begin with the interview then. Do you remember which level you were in when you encountered Entity 102? John. What? No, what's a level? Is this some sort of video game? Robert. Uh, how do I explain it? Just describe the surroundings of the place where you encountered Entity 102. John. Okay, um, I remember it, it was dark, had concrete floors and walls, isolated rooms and hallways. Robert. You seem to be describing level one. John. Confused stare. What? Robert. Uh, nothing. Do you remember for how long you've been in the back rooms? John. I had been wandering for what felt like hours, but I had lost all sense of time in that place. Robert. Very well. Can you describe your encounter in detail? John. Yeah, sh sure. I remember it v vividly. Uh, so I, I was wandering in the back rooms when I saw this mysterious figure staring at me from a distance. Someone was standing there, or s something. It looked like a human, but it was missing a head. Robert. And did you try to get a closer look at the figure? John. Yes, I did. I tried to get a clear view of the figure, but the more I looked at it, the more unnerved I became. It was a headless person, dressed in a formal black suit and holding a bloody crowbar in his right hand. Robert. Well, would you be able to draw a rough sketch of the entity? It would make things a little easier for us to visualize. John. Sh sure, I can draw it, I guess. A pen and a piece of paper is provided to John for drawing. John holds the pencil, closes his eyes for a few seconds, then opens them, staring at the paper before starting to draw. John finishes the sketch with a few notable parts of the entity labeled. John. Here. This is what I saw. Robert. That looks terrifying. What did you do next? John. I felt uneasy and tried to move away, but the entity started moving towards me. I panicked and ran for my life. Robert. How did the entity behave during the encounter? John. It just stared at me and started moving towards me with the crowbar. It was as if it was hunting me down. It was very creepy and unsettling. Robert. Did the entity say or do anything that you found notable? John. No, it didn't say anything. Didn't I tell you it was missing a fucking head? Robert. I am aware. I just wanted to know if it had any other... Never mind. Anyway, how did you manage to escape? John. I rounded another corner and found myself a little space in between the walls to hide in. I slid in and patiently waited for it to leave. I stayed there for what felt like an eternity, listening for any sign of the entity. Then, I heard a loud crashing noise, and the sound of footsteps retreating into the darkness. I turned around and the figure was gone. Robert. That's a very interesting detail. Can you tell me more about the sound that distracted the headless entity? John. Yes, it was a sudden loud noise that came from a different direction. I'm not sure what caused it, but I think it might have been a door slamming shut or something falling over. Robert. 
And how did you find this document? John, I followed the sound to investigate what might have caused it. That's when I stumbled upon a group of researchers and guards lying dead on the floor. They all had their blood drained out. The entity must have killed them. One of the researchers was holding this document in his hand. It was drenched in blood. I was able to retrieve it despite the blood. Robert. Very well. This is enough for now. Thank you for your cooperation. We may need to follow up with you in the future. But for now, this concludes the interview. End Log 1757 Warning. Any individuals who encounter Entity 102 are to be immediately evacuated from the area. Personnel are advised to be extremely cautious when entering areas that Entity 102 is suspected to linger frequently. Access File Number 102 Entity Number 102 Habitats Level 1 Revision Undefined all previous assumptions on Entity 102's habitat have turned out incorrect. The Entity is assumed to travel to different levels in search of prey, most commonly levels with little to no light. Image Caption Labeled sketch of Entity 102 drawn by John Walter during the interview. Description Entity 102 is a headless humanoid entity that stands at approximately 2 meters in height. The entity can be commonly found wearing a formal black suit and holding a blood-stained crowbar in its hand. It wears a sleek black suit with a white undershirt and a black tie, all of which never seem to be stained with blood or dirt despite the dank and bloody environment it inhabits. Yet, according to eyewitnesses, its hands always seem to be caked in the thick, sticky, rotting blood of its victims, never drying or washing off. It is observed that Entity 102 cannot be eliminated through the use of firearms or any other methods of physical harm, as its physical form appears to be impervious to destruction. It is capable of moving at incredible speeds and has shown a high level of physical strength and intelligence. Behaviors Entity 102 will brutally injure anyone it encounters until they start to bleed heavily. It will then pour their blood into its headless neck cavity until all the blood in the victim's body is exsanguinated. The entity appears to take pleasure in inflicting pain and will often toy with its victims before killing them. Entity 102 has been observed to avoid attacking children below 13 years of age. It is suspected that Entity 102 may have some form of moral code. The reasons for this behavior are unclear, but there could be several possible explanations. One possibility is that the Entity recognizes the vulnerability of young children and avoids attacking them out of a sense of compassion or empathy. Alternatively, the Entity may have a moral code that values the innocence of children and views attacking them as morally wrong. It is also possible that the Entity's avoidance of children is based on practical considerations. Children may be more difficult to catch than adults, and attacking them may increase the risk of detection or retaliation by other humans. Whatever the reasons for this behavior, the fact that Entity 102 appears to avoid attacking children below the age of 13 years suggests that it is capable of making moral or ethical judgments about its actions. The Entity also deliberately leaves a trail of bloody footsteps as a means of deceiving its prey and luring them into its trap. This behavior is likely a predatory tactic, used to increase the Entity's chances of successfully catching its prey. By leaving a trail of bloody footsteps, the Entity may be attempting to create the impression that it is injured or vulnerable, thereby encouraging the prey to approach it. The prey may perceive the Entity as an easy target and let down their guard, making it easier for the Entity to launch a surprise attack. Alternatively, the Entity may be intentionally misleading the prey by creating a false trail. The bloody footprints could lead the prey in a certain direction, only to suddenly diverge or disappear entirely, leaving the prey disoriented and vulnerable to attack. Overall, this behavior suggests that the entity is intelligent and adaptable, 
using deception and misdirection to improve its chances of catching prey. Entity 102 is known to lurk in specific dark places, such as abandoned buildings and underground tunnels, searching for victims. It has been reported to move quickly and silently, making it difficult to detect. Entity 102 appears to be attracted to areas with low light levels and has shown a particular interest in areas with a history of violent deaths. Biology Entity 102 appears to have standard human biology, though it is unclear how Entity 102 is able to see its prey or function properly without a head. Not much information is available about this entity. This document will be updated as further knowledge is acquired about the entity. Discovery Discovery Log Entity 102 The Headless Hunter Date 10-02-2023 Location Level 1 Entity 102, colloquially referred to as The Headless Hunter, was first encountered on Level 1 of the Backrooms by a group of Meg researchers. The entity's physical description and behaviors were observed and recorded during three research expeditions, two of which were successful. The physical description and behavior of Entity 102 were closely monitored during the first two research expeditions. Entity 102 exhibited highly aggressive behavior, attacking anything within its line of sight, or anything that produced sound within its range. During the third research expedition, the team aimed to study the biology of Entity 102. However, the mission ended tragically. An equipment's unknown malfunctioning accidentally produced a loud crashing noise that attracted the attention of Entity 102. As a result, Entity 102 attacked the team, resulting in the loss of all researchers. The failure of the mission prevented any further exploration of Entity 102's biology. This document is an updated copy of the original document that was recovered from the back rooms. Notice, not much information is available on Entity 102. We are still gathering information about its behavior and origins. Until then, it is advised to remain vigilant and cautious at all times while exploring the back rooms to avoid falling victim to its tactics. Do's and don'ts. Do. Stay away from dark areas or areas with low light. Get away from Entity 102 as soon as possible. Report all sightings of Entity 102 to the Meg. Don't. Try to approach Entity 102. Attempt to communicate with Entity 102. Follow the bloody footsteps on the floor. Footnote. No other instances of Entity 102 have been spotted. End footnote. Footnote. Entity 102 is extremely difficult to contain due to its high speed and strength. End footnote.